Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. We're talking about Doctor Who and she doesn't care about Doctor Who. But very few people care about Doctor Who at this point other than to, to point and laugh or cry because it was a lot of people's you know, favorite shows. It was one of my favorite shows for a number of years and it's very, very clear that Russell T Davies is not going to course correct uh, Chris Chibnall's run where he basically destroyed the origin of the doctor and uh, alienated a lot of a lot of viewers they're doubling down on it tripling down on it they're coming up with nonsense like by generation and and all that jazz and of course doubling down on quote unquote wokeness uh, doubling down on you know pronoun usage and uh, you know the doctor getting lector lectured about uh, uh, you know not being female anymore and how to use pronouns and all the all the talking all the talking points, right? So this article on uh, CBR, and I, I swear to God, this guy, we've talked about this guy before, this journalist. I think he's just writing uh, word salad to get those buzzwords to get hits because CBR does give view bonuses, or at least they did give view bonuses. But uh, you know, he knew this would be controversial, that uh, Chris Chibnall saved Doctor Who. Jodie Whittaker saved Doctor Who. Uh, actually, that's not true at all. Um, and if you go through and you look at the numbers, you can see a massive decline uh, during their run. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some other damage control. Gizmodo's out there talking about how the streaming numbers are great. Uh, Doctor Who's streaming numbers are fantastic on the iPlayer. Yeah, for the old stuff. <laughs> you know, the new stuff, eh, maybe. Uh, then we're going to talk about how the BBC is denying that uh, uh, they're not, that they have any woke bias in, in Doctor Who, right? That they have any woke bias in Doctor Who. And this is after they got a huge uh, cash infusion for diversity and inclusion on screen. But no, there's no wokeness here, guys. Uh, not at all. We're not, they're not doing anything. The diversity and inclusion initiatives, we're not doing anything like that. So let's, uh, let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, no woohoos today. This is a very somber video because we're talking about the death of Doctor Who. Very somber stuff. Uh, go out to shopclownfish.com, pick up a copy of Crimson Ren Volume 1. And uh, previously on Clownfish TV, Geeky has been furiously shipping these books. Uh, in fact, she's packing some up right now. We had a whole bunch of orders come in last night, too. So thank you very much for the support. More Clownfish comics coming your way this year. Um, for sure. Uh, don't get too excited though. You can't uh, do anything with them for like 95 years. Copyright is still in play, but let's talk about this article and we'll, we'll talk about the other stuff. We were going to do a video the other day talking about Dr. Who, but it's kind of hard. It's like comics. It's like, it's very, very dead. And it's, it's kind of hard to muster up enough. Give a shit. Now there has been a lot of talk about Dr. Who because of, you know, David Tennant coming back and then the stupidity around some of the decisions they've been making. In regards to that, and more shockingly, the numbers not being very high for David Tennant and Catherine Tate coming back, the numbers weren't fantastic. They really were not good. Uh, I think a lot of people are just, they're out, they're done. This has come from CBR. Uh, Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker saved Doctor Who. Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor and Chris Chibnall's tenure as showrunner were more controversial than typical for new eras of Doctor Who. Despite the backlash, the 13th Doctor under Chibnall's guidance saved the 60 year old franchise from disappearing again. What? Both Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker are owed a debt to them for keeping the TARDIS in flight. No, uh, the BBC was going to continue airing Doctor Who because they had money for Doctor Who, and it didn't matter who was in the TARDIS. In fact, they had to kick her ass out of the TARDIS, I think prematurely, and they cut her last season short. They kicked her out and brought, brought David Tennant back to try and salvage it, and they took the keys away from Chibnall and gave them to Russell T. Davies and Bad Wolf. Uh, and you know, which is owned, I think by Sony and then Disney got involved, you know, so Disney's throwing money at them too. So no, the, <laughs> this is not true. In fact, uh, if you want to look at the ratings and a lot of people have talked about how the ratings have declined, a lot of people talk about how the ratings have declined. Chibnall's run, Jody Wicker's run, some of the worst viewed episodes of all time. And that's coming off of a high uh, you know, when she debuted, she had like 10, 10 or 11 million views, ratings, million people watching. And that dropped off a cliff after a few weeks and it just continued to decline. So don't tell me that, uh, Chibnall, <laughs> Chibnall saved Dr. Who. Again, I think this is clickbait word salad because this guy probably gets paid, uh, 
a view bonus by comic book resources. It doesn't matter what the content is to them. Just is it getting hits? Is it bringing in ad revenue? And uh, no, it is not because I have my ad blocker on. So it is not. But uh, yeah, there was there was a bump in interest. Like, look, the power of the doctor. That's where she regenerated. Uh, the last like regular episode she was in 3.47 million views. That's like lower than anything on Capaldi's watch and things were dropping off with Capaldi, you know, but look at like the 50th anniversary. So we're t- if you want to compare it here, here's how you really compare it. 50th anniversary to 60th anniversary, the 50th anniversary, 12 and 11 million for those episodes. And, uh, we get down to the star beast seven, 7.14, 6.85. And this is a regeneration episode. That's not good. Now the Christmas special 7.3 people want to check out the new doctor and it's a Christmas special. I mean, even Jody Whitaker, the new Year's special, cause we couldn't do Christmas, the new Year's specials. Uh, she got a bump on those, but don't tell me that, uh, <laughs> Chibnall and Whitaker saved doctor who they actually, I think doctor who was in decline, uh, the last season of, uh, Capaldi, which I, I, t- I want to restate, I love Peter Capaldi. He is my favorite by far of the new who doctors. He is my favorite. I love him very much, but he definitely had shitty scripts and shitty companions. You know, it's just like when he was allowed to shine, when he was allowed to monologue, my God, he was, he was right up there with Tom Baker, but uh, yeah, they, they wasted him, wasted him. And they kicked him out early too, I think to bring Whitaker in to, to try to change it up because they thought they could save the ratings and they actually, uh, drove it into the ground, and then they pissed on the grave. So now they're trying to justify the uh, success of Doctor Who on Gizmodo, uh, on iPlayer, that uh, Doctor Who was the fifth most streamed series for the week on the iPlayer, and it got like 10 million views, 10 million times over the week between Christmas and New Year's, and you're thinking, oh, it's the Christmas special, right? 10 million people watch a Christmas special? No. No, 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 no. The corporation has announced that Doctor Who, and most specifically Doctor Who from 2005 onwards, were streamed 10 million times between Christmas and New Year's, helping the platform break a previous record for streamed content for the week between January 2nd, January 8th, 2023, with 177 million programs being streamed in total. Cool. It was also number five. So it was in fifth place. You know, you got to, like, they're just trying to be like, oh my God, guys. Oh my God. Uh, Doctor Who. It's such a huge success because 10 million people watched it between Christmas and New Year's. And again, it's tricking people into thinking it's the Christmas special. And it's not the Christmas special. It's all of Doctor Who. All of Doctor Who. You know? So this is, this is, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is damage control. Uh, BBC dunks on research accusing it of feeding viewers a diet a diet of woke bias. Again, why would you ever think the BBC is biased? Why would you ever think the BBC has an agenda? Um, so this is uh, the Campaign for Common Sense uh, has to publish some research on um, its examples of woke issues, apparently. They said that they've been peddling, the BBC has been peddling viewers a steady diet of woke bias, including news about slavery and gender diversity storylines and drama. Uh, the BBC said it did not. Uh, it did not do that. So the campaign for common sense said the research reveals that rather than upholding the high standards of impartiality, parts of the BBC continue to peddle a steady diet of woke bias, both through their plot lines of popular dramas, but also in some of its news coverage. And they're rattling off some numbers here about you know how many of these shows have. Uh, slavery links, uh, non-binary characters, trans characters. Um, they said Doctor Who got 144 complaints for uh, transgender rows. They said it was inappropriate. Actually, what I'd say was more concerning, from my point of view, right, was that transgender rows, not to be confused with the other rows, but the new rows lectured the doctor on pronoun usage when the doctor literally was a woman like the day before. And the doctor's been around for like, what, millions of years, billions of years? Who the hell knows? And has been every, thanks to Chris Chibnall, has been every conceivable type of person. But you know what? You got to lecture the doctor on on pronoun usage and make a whole big like after school special segment about it. And that's where it gets weird. And that's where I think things go from being progressive to quote unquote woke is when it starts to become very obvious 
that they're trying to push people's opinions in one particular direction. And it's out of place. This is like uh, the Transformers, the new uh, kid cartoon. Was it Earth, Earth Spark, whatever it is, where they have the non-binary transformer. And it's like, okay, Autobots and Decepticons and stuff's going on and yada, yada, yada. Okay, now let's take five minutes to discuss this transformer being non-binary when it doesn't fit with the rest of the show. And it happened in Blue's Clues too. That's when it, that's when it, you know, people were like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. There's no agenda, but you're going to put the actual show on pause and then talk to the audience and lecture the audience, then that's when, that's when people get pissed, you know, cause even Russell T Davies, his original run, we had, you know, trans characters. We had, uh, we had uh, pansexual characters, we had gay characters, and it was never like an after school special where they had to call it out and be like, well, did you know, did you know audience, you awful people? And again, this has to do with these, I, I believe, um, you know, this investment that they get and, uh, you know, all of that. So I said that the, yeah, the research reveals that they are not impartial. The BBC said cherry picking a handful of examples or highlighting genuine mistakes in thousands of hours of output does not constitute analysis is not a true representation of BBC content. A lot of people complain about the BBC though. They're like, it's disproportionately diverse for the UK. Just saying. And it's, it's obviously so we're proud of our output and seek to represent all audiences and a range of stories and perspectives across the entirety of our services, there will be, of course, occasions when people disagree with or want to challenge what they have watched or heard, and we have well-publicized routes for them to do that. Basically, you can take it to the complaints department, and they'll just throw it in the, the rubbish bin. That's what they'll do. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I don't know, guys. Um, we're going to see, we're going to see a lot of, uh, weirdness, I think around Dr. Who. Now what's going to be interesting, and this is related, but not related. Uh, Disney just canceled American born Chinese after one season. They've been canceling a lot of fantasy shows that I don't think have an audience. And it's not because of diversity. It's just, I think they're expensive and nobody's watching them. Um, in the case of Willow, I think it was cause people were like, we wanted to show about Willow, not about, you know, his lesbian friends or whatever. But, but, uh, they're canceling the shows that are very expensive. And Doctor Who looks more expensive than it's ever looked. And I mean, that's one thing I can say about it that, you know, it's like, okay, the show looks really, really good now. It looks like a movie. Every episode looks like a movie. How long is Disney going to be willing to bankroll that? You know, seriously, like I, I think they're doing two seasons with Shudi Gatwa, but I'm like, Disney's cutting back. They're cutting back on Star Wars. I mean, they're cutting back on Star Wars, which they own. They don't own Doctor Who. They're cutting back to the point where you can see the freaking plywood and Boba Fett, okay? Because they're not finishing these shots. So how long until Disney decides they don't want to bankroll Doctor Who anymore if the numbers aren't there? And we don't know what numbers they need to see uh, to justify success, but they greenlit this back when they were flush with cash or they thought they were flush with cash and they were spending heavy on streaming. And I just don't see this lasting very long. I could be wrong. But I wouldn't be surprised if after, you know, season or two with Shudi Gatwa, they're like, you know what? We're done. We're out. If we didn't get a return on our investment. We don't own this. We're done with it. Uh, just like a lot of fans are done with it. So going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later.